Over the years, I have always had a garden. But this year, I decided to get serious and get all my vegetables from my backyard. In the process, I learned I didn't know what I thought I knew and also gained a better understanding of self-sufficiency. So let's go through what I learned. First, you don't need a lot of space to grow a lot. I started out with the idea that I would make two extra raised beds to go with the beds I already had. That quickly ballooned to seven beds, but it was still a small section of the backyard. This worked because I learned to add trellises to have the veggies grow up rather than out. This paid off later because it helped with airflow and made finding fruit pretty easy. Next, soil preparation is more than buying compost and calling it a day. In the past, I would buy compost, add it to the long beds, and hope my seeds became vegetables. But I learned after watching some videos and doing a lot of reading that veggies need nutrients, and there were ways to provide that other than throwing down chemicals. I learned about things like permaculture and a great concept called hugel culture where decaying wood is placed in the bottom of your beds to add nutrients. These concepts were confirmed when I planted corn in two different sections, and the corn planted later, after preparing the soil, performed better. But the most surprising thing I learned is that for years I had been throwing away mulch gold in the form of dead leaves I raked around a backyard tree. I added the leaves to my beds and chalked it up to, you live and you learn. The next surprising thing was that I could add nutrients to the soil by making my own compost. This was done by putting food scraps, coffee grounds, leaves and other brown and green things from the yard into a five gallon bucket, cutting some holes, adding water, and then turning it upside down occasionally. And in 18 to 21 days, I had grade A compost. In no time, I began to see worms, something I had never seen in the beds before. Then I learned that plants can help each other. Marigolds and basil became my friends, especially when I learned that basil can help ward off tomato bugs. Marigolds help deter pests and draw pollinators, and peas and beans add nitrogen to the soil. Just don't add marigolds to legumes as they stunt their growth. I added basil to everything. I even learned about the three sisters concept of growing peas, corn, and squash together. I used basil rather than squash. In no time, I had wonderful growth and more strawberries than I had ever gotten, even from a full bed. Next, embrace the chaos of planting. I learned from permaculture that nature likes diversity and I went full tilt chaos, planting corn with strawberries, kale mixed with bell peppers surrounded by marigolds, collards, and basil, with peas far away from the marigolds. And the stuff just kept growing. I was making all kinds of meals right from my backyard. And that's saying a lot from a former plant and prey gardener. Then, setting up a water system doesn't have to be expensive. I wanted to hand water most of the beds, but Home Depot wanted $40 for a hose 
and that was a short one. But my neighbor just happened to be throwing away a water hose, and I asked if I could have it. I bought a hose mender that allowed me to extend the hose I already had, as well as a hand wand, all for about $25, and everything worked just fine. And I found I liked the meditation value of hand watering and inspecting the plants. Then, an important point, things change. Just as nature is ever evolving, so should your thinking about your garden. You may have to change as you go. It just comes with the territory. Everything you plant is not going to make it. A side trellis I was no longer using when the plants died became a gift for a friend. When my squash died, the pole beans I planted with them took off and just loved the trellis I built and is still producing beans. What was a patio area gave me a chance to add more flowers for pollinators, so a relaxation area became more garden useful. Simply put, things change. Next, plants adapt, so save your seeds. I grew most of my plants from seeds, and I read an article that you should save the seeds from your harvest because you don't know where your seeds were originally grown, and plants remember the soil and climate they came from. Saving your seeds lets the plants pass on information regarding your particular climate and soil type that should make the following plants a lot hardier. I'm definitely going to test the theory next spring as I made a point of saving as many seeds as possible. Then, a little gardening knowledge makes you more aware. Now that I know more about providing nutrients for the soil, I find myself picking up stuff other people have thrown away, like these brown pine needles I can use for ground cover or the water hose my neighbor threw away. That is the advantage you have over large-scale growers. A few found objects go a long way in your backyard. And finally, use what you learned. If you were anything like me, you didn't know what you didn't know. But now you do. Whether you had a small or a large harvest, you now have a wealth of information regarding what worked and what didn't, and maybe why. Use that information to begin now to plan your garden and prepare your soil. And come spring, when the bell rings, come out swinging. See you next time.